Here's what's happening right now. The Capitol is emptying out after Governor Greitens delivered his State of the State address. Good evening, everyone. I'm Emily Spain. And I'm Jim Rick. Thanks for joining us. The governor spoke for about a half hour, hitting on topics from employment numbers to the foster system. KOMUH's Lydia Nussbaum was at the address. She joins us now live near the Capitol. Lydia, a lot of topics tonight, but the focus seemed to be on money, savings, and taxes. That's right. I'm right outside the Capitol building, described as the hardest working families in the state. Reporting live in Jefferson City, Lydia Nussbaum, KOMU at News. Shortly after the governor's address, Democrats delivered a pre-taped rebuttal. The House Minority Leader, Gail McCann Beatty, criticized the governor for not releasing a budget two years in a row. That's a break with past traditions. The Kansas City lawmaker has other concerns as well. Governor Greitens markets himself as a political outsider dedicated to cleaning up state government. During his first year in office, however, Governor Greitens administration has been stained by ethical failings, disdain for the law, and a complete lack of transparency. Among other examples, she mentioned an attorney general's investigation into Greitens staff using an app that deletes text messages. Today was warm and sunny, but Kenton is tracking a winter weather system for tomorrow. Kenton, what can you tell us? Emily, thank you very much. And track this, this system into the next eight days coming up later. Because of that forecast, Columbia Public Schools will dismiss classes two and a half hours early tomorrow. We have a few other delays reported. You can find a full list of schools adjusting schedules because of the weather at our website, KOMU.com. Local firefighters are preparing for one of their worst case scenarios, someone falling, falling through the ice. The weather was warm today, but that didn't stop the ice training. The Jefferson City Fire Department did drills at McKay Lake. The procedures included firefighters breaking the ice, acting as a sunken victim, and getting pulled out by other firefighters. The division's chief of training says a victim could have just five to ten minutes left for breathing after falling through the ice. He says the training is important because firefighters have to act fast. Time is always going to be against us in this situation. We're not going to find out about it as quickly as we'd like, so we need to be on the ice and to the victim as quickly as we can. And that's one of the things we're focusing on is how do we get to that victim. On ice activities such as skating are prohibited at Jefferson City Public Lakes. Firefighters say the best way to stay safe is to stay away. A day after mudslides destroyed homes and left at least 15 people dead in Southern California, rescuers set off in search of the missing. Torrents of mud rained down from mountains left bare from last month's wildfires. Rescue workers say at least 300 people were caught by debris or are unaccounted for. President Trump sat down with his cabinet today. One of the biggest topics, immigration. NBC's Blaine Alexander reports. It is a record also. In president our Trump's first cabinet meeting of 2018, kicking off with a familiar continues. tone. The president now calling on Republicans to take control of the investigation. That was Blaine Alexander reporting when asked whether he would sit down with special counsel Mueller for an interview. The president did not give a direct answer. Tonight, we have more information about the case involving the shooting death of Anthony Warren at Waffle House. Charges filed against one man and a lawsuit against another. KOMU 8's Olivia Gerling has been looking into both devel developments and tells us who's involved, Olivia. Emily and Jim, the mother of Warren's children, filed the wrongful death lawsuit today. It names both the Waffle House and the man known as armed Art. and dangerous. His bond has been set at a million dollars. In the studio, Olivia Gerling, KMU 8 News. The family of a Columbia man shot and killed near Clark Lane last year is suing the alleged shooter. Cameron Carruthers was shot last May during an argument with Ricky Gurley. Carruthers' friends have maintained Gurley shot him while he had his hands up and was unarmed. Gurley faces a federal gun charge but has not been charged with Carruthers' death. Carruthers' family is suing Gurley and his private investigation business for wrongful death. An autopsy is scheduled tomorrow for a Sedalia area woman who died in an overnight shooting. It happened at the Western View Estates Trailer Park. The Pettis County Sheriff and Coroner confirmed she is 21-year-old Cassandra White. White had two young children who were at home at the time of the shooting. They were not hurt. No arrests have been made. 
The Substance Abuse Advisory Commission spent more than half of its meeting today discussing a city resolution that would endorse the Missouri Medical Marijuana Initiative. The Columbia City Council introduced the bill in November. If passed, the council will ask its representatives in the General Assembly to push for marijuana legislation. The Advisory Commission will wait until its next meeting, February 14th, to take any action. Members want to learn more about the pros and cons of legalization. Coming up, Olympic officials inch closer to North Korea's participation in the Winter Games. Plus, how thousands of tourists got stuck in the Swiss Alps for two days. 